I made a list of 25 of the most popular layer one cryptocurrency networks. I then took the current market capitalization of each and the daily transactions occurring on each network and compared the two to try and determine which networks are the most undervalued relative to the amount of usage and adoption they're currently experiencing. Super quick, why would you want to do this? Well, daily transactions gives an indication of how much usage and adoption a cryptocurrency network is currently experiencing. Whilst market capitalization gives, tells us how valuable a network is seen in the eyes of its investors, by comparing the two values, we can see which networks are undervalued or overvalued relative to the others. Disclaimer, while transactions done on chain will be visible to us, transactions occurring on centralized exchanges won't be, as they're typically done through the internal bookkeeping of the exchange and not on chain. Thankfully, that can save us on transaction fees, but it means that the transaction won't be visible to us. Can you imagine having to pay Ethereum's transaction fees every time you wanted to sell or buy ETH or an ERC20 token? No, God, please, no, no! <sighs> Now, as always, this isn't financial advice. You've heard that before, you know it, I know it. But this is still an interesting exercise that can give us some additional information that you might be able to incorporate into your trading strategies. So with that out of the way, let's jump right in. Here's my lovely, beautiful spreadsheet listing some of my favorite layer one cryptocurrencies. You can see Ethereum there and Avalanche here. and Oh, who can forget Grandpa Bitcoin? Now I've jumped onto some of the most popular network explorers for each of these cryptos plucked the number of daily transactions out and thrown them into this spreadsheet. The number of daily transactions can be seen here in this column. I then hopped over to CoinMarketCap and found the current total market capitalization for each network and plopped it in this column here. Now, we can divide the total market cap of each network by the number of daily transactions. We can think of this as a dollars per transaction value, where the lower the number, the better. Think of it like this. If we have a small market cap, the lesser known a network and the greater opportunity for growth. This will be a smaller number in the numerator. Now, if we have a large number of daily transactions, it indicates a healthy network with lots of usage and adoption. This will be a larger number in the denominator. When we divide these two, a smaller result indicates a network with lots of healthy usage and adoption, whilst also having a small market cap with greater opportunity for growth. So let's run the calc for each network and sort by which networks are the most undervalued. Now we can go ahead and sort by the resulting ratio from smallest to largest to try and determine which networks are currently the most undervalued relative to the amount of usage and adoption. It looks like the most undervalued layer one cryptos relative to their usage and adoption are Hedera, Solana, Stellar, Tron, and Oasis Network. Each of these have very high daily transactions occurring on each network relative to their market cap, with particular standouts being Hedera and Solana for their massive daily transaction counts and the Oasis Network for its healthy daily transactions but extremely small market cap. Coming down the list to the opposite end, we have Bitcoin, Dogecoin and Cardano as the most overvalued networks. Bitcoin shouldn't be surprised as it's the largest market cap by far while still having extremely limited transactions per second. Dogecoin coming in as the second most overvalued layer one also isn't a surprise as it's fundamentally a meme coin with a market cap propped up primarily through hype. Cardano is a surprise for myself as I didn't expect the network to be so overvalued. However, thinking on it, it makes sense as Cardano has significant retail exposure with many investors focusing on future developments and not current adoption. It's important to note that there are many other fundamental aspects to each network that need to be considered before investing. Many of these networks have unique and exciting features and architecture that may enable significant future adoption. With that said, I still feel this information is useful for seeing where different networks stand currently and can be used as part of a healthy investment strategy. Thanks for watching the video. If you found this video interesting or useful, leave a like or comment. It's much appreciated. Thanks.